Welcome back to Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Wind Waker. Last episode, we got inside of this cabana here uh, to start looking for the Triforce charts. And that fireplace can actually hurt you, so don't just run into it recklessly. Also, as you've noticed, we can actually use our grappling hook in here to break those pots and um, get some rupees from them. Of course, if you don't want to miss them by leaving some on top of the cupboards, feel free to throw them down and then grab the rupees, which is what I plan to do. Eh, eh. Wait, wait, wait. We, we better hurry so that we don't lose those rupees. They're probably disappearing right as I speak. No, they're all disappearing! Oh well. We got as many as we could. But the reason you can take out your grappling hook is because there's a hidden switch right here, like the ones in Dragon Roost Cavern. It's almost like something out of a hack. It's just right there. And by swinging on it, you put out the fireplace, because somehow the fireplace was controlled by that switch. Not that I'm complaining, because this is a pretty cool part. Uh, you get to go underneath the cabana, and for how small it is, it's actually a pretty huge sewer. Yes, it's a sewer dungeon. They had one of these, and there's always a sewer area in the 3D games, is what I've come to realize. It had uh, the bottom of the well in Ocarina of Time. Majora's Mask had the one in Clock Town. Uh, Twilight Princess had the one that you had to go through twice, I think. One in the beginning and then one closer to the middle. But this is a pretty fun sewer area. Um, you get to go and crawl in these little spaces here. Of course, there are rats, so you want to watch out for them, because if they run into you, they steal your rupees. Now, if you find a dead end, it isn't the worst of all things in this maze, because dead ends usually have a lot of rupees in them. So it's usually a good thing if you find a dead end. Um, some people say that by going into first person's uh, perspective, you actually crawl faster. I don't know if this is true or not, but it's just something I've always preferred because it makes me feel like I'm playing a squeakier version of Doom. <laughs> With no guns and just a thing that says B, return, and occasionally turns into a sword. So much fun. Anyway, you just crawl out of here and then you'll always pop up in a different section of the maze unless you happen to go back the way you came. Uh, also, apparently we can target rats through walls. <laughs> And uh, that switch there can be hit by a skull hammer. These skull hammer switches that you need to use to get through the dungeon. Um, which is why, once you have the skull hammer, you can get this chart very early. Or relatively early. There are some that you can get very early, but we'll get to those later. There's some you can get without even finding bombs. I know there's one that you only need a high oil pair for. And there's a couple that you can get before you even find bombs. By having the cannon boats um, bomb what you need to bomb for you. <laughs> I know this because I did one run of the game, because I'm hardcore, where I tried to do everything at the earliest possible time. Um, I didn't actually end up finishing the run, I don't think, because it was pretty boring. Um, but I realized that there was so much stuff that you could get done theoretically before Tower of the Gods. You could have 12 hearts, and you could already have 3 of the Triforce Shards. So there's that. Anyway, there's 100 rupees back there, which was more than I remember being in this maze. So I guess we... Better head down this other crawl space, too. That's, I hate those rats! It's, it's kind of disconcerting how those rats are... Sometimes you hear their enemy music when they're not even necessarily able to get to you. That can be a little bit unsettling. And I guess each part of the maze is color-coded. This one's like green and the other one was... orangish? Like brick? Oh, it's like Mario, Mario Brothers-like colors. That's kind of cool. I never noticed that. I don't think that was intentional, though. Alright. Uh, so some of these switches just open up earlier sections of the maze. You'll know it's an earlier section if you go through and you see, oh wait, there's a light, so it's a shortcut without having to crawl. You can now get through there without crawling. These things stay open. Unlike cutting trees in Pokemon. They don't come back. Oh no! <gasps> ah! Ah! I didn't expect you to come out of there! <laughs> Seriously, I looked in. What? No! Don't take my rupees! Thank you. Okay, there's something very bad down there, but I didn't expect the rat to come out. <laughs> um, anyway, there are re-deads down there. It's a trap, a very well-laid trap. For an idiot, this is a pretty well-laid trap. Okay, so there's a five rupees there. Wait, did we drop those from before? I don't usually remember there being five there. Well, let's grab it. And there are re-deads, like I said. So, skull hammer. Uh, cut, 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 cut. Get rid of them. I hate them. Gee... It would really suck to have these under your house. <laughs> Just like, what's that sound? Let's go check down in the basement. <laughs> so, yeah, we defeated the Redeads without too much trouble. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but Redeads are, among all the enemies in the game, 
They're a pretty good source of rupees. Um, so if you want to, you can stand from a distance and just hit them with your grappling hook a lot. And I think you can get more than 30 rupees per redead. Pretty useful. And I guess this part of the maze is just wood. And it's not really a maze, it's just a straight line. There's also some fossil walls down here, like the kind they have around the Forest Haven. That's interesting uh, consistency, considering this is right next to the Forest Haven, so this is the same thing that would be down at this level. They really have good attention to detail in this game. I'm not even sure if that was um, intentional or not. So what you gotta do here is just stand on the little um, icon on the floor and use the Wind's Requiem. We had to do this once before, I think, at the Tower of the Gods. No, twice, actually. And it's pretty obvious what you gotta do there, because it says there are wind-shaped markings here. <laughs> and, out of the treasure chest, you get a Triforce chart. This is our first one, and we need to find seven more. So it's a start. Start of a very long quest. But I don't really mind. Of course, I don't like it as much as I used to. I remember doing it for the first time was actually pretty fun. Um, because of all the hidden little caves and stuff that you get to visit. Um, but after playing through the game a few times, I admit that this part kind of does wear on you after a while. There's also a sliding puzzle game you can play in here if you really like, and I actually have played all the rounds of it before, but I'm not going to show you it because, honestly, it's not that fun and it would be a waste of time in my opinion. We've got an actual game to play here, so why don't we do that instead? Uh, speaking of which, we should probably set our sights on the next Triforce chart, um, which is on an island which is pretty close to here. Um, so on our way there, I figure that we should drop by another island where I know there's something we can get. Because um, in my Word document, I know that there's a treasure we can pull up at a nearby island. So it is located due east of here, exactly one square away. So there you are. Sail? You eluded me. I think that's all we have to really do in this squadron anymore. Of course, we're probably going to have some random thing to come back here for eventually. So sail east right over here. Okay, uh, we are at Bomb Island. We've been here before. Um, really, there's not so much on the island that's of interest to us anymore. Just in particular, just in particular, in particular, uh, we want to go after the treasure here that we can get with our grappling hook. It should be right about here. There's also a Goron merchant here. Oh, right, that's one thing that I'm going to have to get around to doing eventually. Well, we haven't finished the trading quest yet. Um... That means we haven't gotten all the different items and stuff you need to get for the trading quest. We only did the first couple. So we're going to have to wrap that up. If I was smart, I would have done that all in one round. So we're going to head um, in this direction, toward that pointy island. I'm going to cut ahead to it right now. This is island um, that we need to look for the next Triforce chart on. This is also the chart that you can get earliest in the game. Um, I think you can get it. Right after the uh, right after the Forbidden Woods dungeon is over, maybe even before that, because it's pretty much right on the main track, um, a little bit to the side when you go from Dragon Roost Cavern to the uh, Forest Haven. But anyway, this is Bird's Peak Rock, or was it Bird's Rock Peak? No, Bird's Peak Rock. I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, wow, I just looked at the name and then I forgot it. Not that it matters. So yes, we do have a treasure here to pull up. This is not the Triforce chart. Um, it's just a treasure that we can get here. Um, because we are around the nine minute mark, I figure that we should probably get the chart here next episode. So for now, we're just going to have to be content with whatever we pull up from here. My guess is it's 200 rupees. See, if you get all the charts, um, if you get all the treasure charts and all the silver rupees, you're going to have much more, uh, than necessary to pay off the 398, uh, per translating Triforce charts that you need to give to Tingle. So we're going to get the we're going to get the Triforce chart here next episode. Um I guess I'll see you then.